hello. I come to you today with a book tag, my first book tag, which is very fitting because it is the Bookish Beginnings book tag. Um, I was tagged by Charlie at Charlie Emma Hay. Please, please, please go check out her channel. I will uh, clicky her face right here and also I'll link it down below. She used to be a bookseller and has so much enthusiasm for books and I just love watching her videos because she just gets so passionate about books whether she likes them or doesn't like them and um, she's just so entertaining to watch you will definitely have a chuckle. I just feel like you are sort of having a chat with her rather than her doing a video at you. She also is really into theatre so if you enjoy that then yeah go check her out. On with the tag because there are a few questions and we all know that I ramble. I used to read a lot of kind of Arthurian legend and the Red Wall series by Brian Jacques, which is um, like swashbuckly animals. And also there was a lot of food description, which like feasts laid out, which probably drew me to them to be honest, because food, why not? I was also really into the Point Horror series. Yeah, this was like an umbrella series, um, kind of like Goosebumps if anyone's heard of that. Lots of different authors writing individual stories but all published under like the Point Horror series. I think the biggest author to come out of this was probably LJ Smith who went on to write The Vampire Diaries, um, which really isn't my jam but she wrote a trilogy within the Point Horror series which was called Forbidden Game which I absolutely loved and um, I actually have a bound copy of it now so I really want to read it again as an adult but where do you find the time like ah uh, where there really wasn't like young adult when I was younger to like help transition you into adult fiction so I would say that the first adult fiction that I read was maybe Northern Lights which I know now is classed as like a young adult but then I don't know because of like the mature themes and whatnot um that might be classed as it, but if not, <laughs> I'm not 100% certain because nothing in the old noggin. To kill a mockingbird, maybe? However, that is my next answer to the question of because I don't think that we had to read it in school. I can't remember ever like studying it or anything, but I definitely read it when I was like in secondary school and um, I really really enjoyed it however I have not picked up the most recent uh, Call of Watchmen just because I think I've always been drawn towards like uh, like fantasy sci-fi type things but I've always thought of um, the Auburn Newton series by Isabel Carmody as my proper gateway into science fiction which the Point Horror series that I mentioned previously had some offshoots and one of them was uh, Point Sci-Fi and they published the Orba Newton series by Isabel Carmody who was an Australian author. It was like dystopian future people with uh, sort of telepathic powers and lots of questions about society and how we should live together and be tolerant. But yeah, I think that was probably the first one. Also The Giver by Lois Lowry. Um, I remember reading that when I was a lot younger and that was maybe new dystopian fiction at that time. The other books I can maybe think of for this question are my introduction into steampunk books which would probably be The Parasol Protectorate by Gail Carriger which starts with Soulless and is quite a Victorian femme positive paranormal series with some werewolves and vampires in within the corsets but I absolutely love 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 it so go check that out if you want a bit of tongue-in-cheek colourful steampunk. The other one is The Clockwork Centuries by Sherry Priest which is a little bit more American as in it's set in America, um, alternative history, civil war, a little bit more gritty. They're, they're to me uh, my two introductions into steampunk in slightly different branches. Uh, and that was Now I'll be honest, until I became a bookseller, I wasn't really um, concerned about whether the books that I was reading were literary prize winners or not and I didn't notice or pay any attention. So I might have read something before this, but the one that I can remember was uh, Julian Barnes' Sense of an Ending which was 
it was fine. It was quite a short read, but I didn't feel like I got as much out of it as I could have if I had a lot of people to talk about it with. Book prizes. There's often a lot of levels or a lot of emotions to talk about and if you don't have people to talk about them with then it kind of falls a little bit flat and you think that you should be getting a lot more out of them than you are. Sometimes you don't look the direction that the author is looking in or it just doesn't connect with you on a personal level. You haven't experienced these particular things. There can be a whole sort of plethora of reasons that it doesn't resonate with you but I think that you always expect it to if it's won a prize and it doesn't always happen that way and the sense of an ending. Yet again, as with the uh, prize winners, I didn't really pay attention to what was translated and what was not. I think Miss Miller's Feeling for Snow by Peter Hoog was maybe my first translated fiction. I can't think of anything else that rings any kind of like jangly that might have been translated but you didn't pay attention to it bells. I first started booktube because, um, I, well, I actually started YouTube first, I guess. I wasn't very well and most of my friends live very far away from me, so I thought the easiest way to keep them in the loop of what was happening with me would be to do a video, which I did, and then I discovered that booktube kind of existed because I was off work and I was just like trying to find something to do to keep me occupied and thought oh, I'll try and maybe do one of those and I've kept maybe trying to do one of those for a few months now um, with a lot of kind of stop starting in between. I do struggle sometimes I just kind of think that I well I don't script anything as you can probably tell I just kind of sit down and start babbling about stuff which isn't really that great for length of video, content of video I feel like a lot of the people that I watch say things much more efficiently, effectively and succinctly than I would and have already kind of maybe said all the things that I would want to say. So it hinders me a little bit doing like discussion videos or anything other than kind of oh, wrap up. However, first book tag, so who knows, maybe a lot more of those to come in the future. So that has been my bookish beginnings book tag and until next time, 